last video, I talked about how acceleration and velocity are not always in the same direction, but acceleration and net force are always in the same direction. Here I'd like to consider three cases for a car, not a frictionless car, but an actual car driving along where friction and air resistance are a factor. So in the first force diagram, right here, I have a force of friction to the left, a force of air resistance to the left, a force of propulsion to the right, and the force of the road and the force of gravity are pushing up and down, and those are both, those two are both the same size. Now here I put in some numbers just to make it easier uh, to talk about the sizes. We don't have to have numbers here, but for the purposes of, of this video, I thought it would be a little bit easier. The force of friction, we'll say, is two newtons, the force of air resistance, three newtons, and the force of propulsion, two newtons. The force to the left is a total of five newtons, and the force to the right is two newtons. That means the net force is to the left. The force to the left, is, the net force to the left is three newtons. So I've drawn my double arrow there to represent the net force. And so it's three units long, or three newtons long in this case. And I draw that separate from the force diagram. So this is an object, a car, that's moving to the right, but slowing down because the net force is to the left. And since the net force is to the left, it means the acceleration is to the left. Now if we wanted this car to move at a constant velocity, we would need the net force to be zero. We, we know that from Newton's first law or from the second law. The first law says for an object to have a constant velocity, that only happens when the net force is zero. So for the net force to be zero, we need our force of propulsion to be five newtons, assuming that everything else stays the same. So five newtons to the right, five newtons to the left. This has a net force of zero. Now many of you would look at this and think this object is not moving, but in fact, it is, a, it is an object that's moving, it's a car that's moving, it has, and I didn't label it because of space, but this is the air resistance force, please label that on your paper. This is the frictional force. There would be no air resistance force if the car wasn't moving. So if a car is moving along at 50 miles per hour, just as an example, and you want it to continue to move at 50 miles per hour, how much force would you apply? Well, the amount of force you need to apply has to be equal to all of the forces that are acting against it added together. Again, with our made up numbers of 2 and 3, that adds up to 5. So we need exactly 5 newtons of propulsive force to cause the car to continue to move at a constant speed. If we gave it a little less than 5 or way less than 5, it's going to slow down. And if we give it more than 5 newtons of force to the right, it's going to be speeding up. And that's this third case here. Everything is the same. The only thing I've changed is that this is 5.01 newtons. And again, I'm just putting in a number there that's just slightly larger. If you have just a little bit more force acting with the motion, it's going to be speeding up. And so these are the three main possibilities, at least for, for straight line motion. Slowing down, continuing at the same speed in the same direction, or still going the same direction, but speeding up. And if I were to draw a net force arrow for this case, it would be quite difficult because it's only 0.1 units to the right. So it's quite a short arrow acting to the right. 